Well, indeed, good afternoon. Welcome. This is KTN Business Today. This, of course, being the last day of the trading week. My name is Peter Kava. And as you go into your weekend, I bid you welcome to this last edition of KTN Business Today this week. Of course, it has been an eventful week. We have been coming to you live from Kakamega at the devolution conference of course that having come to an end yesterday we will be taking a backward look at that event and several others to inform just what your week has been all about and of course try to project that into next week as ever i have with me in studio our resident well economic commentator this of course is ken geshinga he is the chief economist at mentoria consulting he is here to gaze into the economic crystal ball and well, really speak into that conversation and be able to talk to us about what to expect in the following week, especially based on the events that have happened so far. As ever, we want to start off at the securities exchanges at the markets to take a look at what exactly has been happening in regards to the currency and in regards to trading, of course. This week having seen several political events that of course having been something that has been making a big big difference for many many different people let's start off with that look of the markets and start off by looking at the various currency pairs and of course to well take a look at the kenya shilling versus the dollar pound and euro well, the dollar pegged at 101.01, buying 100.20, uh, selling, buying and selling, uh, selling levels there respectively. The pound pegged at 139.44, 139.74, buying and selling levels, but the euro was trading at 121.49, buying 122.15, selling. That is the currency. What exactly has the market itself been saying? This, of course, being the barometer of the entire Kenyan economy. This, of course, was the performance at the last trading session. The turnover for the day, 607 million uh, shillings worth of shares bought and sold. Shares traded, 20 million individual shares. Uh, the NSC 20 share index pegged at some 3705.36 points, that of course being 3705.36. Bonds traded to the tune of some 1.4 billion Kenya shillings. Well, moving on, what exactly has been the counters that are driving these trends? Well, Safaricom, Barclays, uh, Kenya Power, and the Equity Bank being the biggest movers, the most active stock. Safaricom moving 11 million shares in that trading session. Barclays, well, Bank, PLC, they are moving 2.30 million, especially on the news of the progress of its name change, how that is coming along a big story that week. Kenya Power, 1.19 million shares, and Equity Bank moving some 1.01 million shares. Well, what have been the bulls and the bears of that session? What are the shares that have been driving that? Tracking in both directions, while well, winning stocks of the day, these were the bulls, Standard Group, well, PLC, that of course is at 9.84% to 33 shillings 50 cents. Umeme, that of course is the Ugandan power provider, 9 shillings 80 cents up to 11 shillings 20. Flame Tree Group up 9.76% to some 4 shillings 50 cents. While Total Kenya up 9.38% to 35 shillings flat. Well, let's take a different stance now. Look at the losing stocks of the day. These are IGADS, BOC, Samir, and Longhorn. Now, IGADS trending downwards, 9.09% to 17 shillings 50 cents. BOC down, uh, gas is down 5.56% to 85 shillings flat. While Samir is trending downwards 5.45% to 2 shillings and 60 cents. Uh, Longhorn, well, Kenya Limited down there, 5.5%. 0.5% to 4 shillings 70 cents. Of course, these numbers are expected to change as the market comes to a full close. You do remember that our numbers are delayed and we will be bringing you subsequent updates in our coming bulletins. Well, so what exactly have been the news stories that have been driving these various trends? Well, to the news now, and as improved economic activity is likely to push the country in releasing the, in realizing the Kenya Vision 2030 blueprint, mechanical implementation of the fiscal consolidation through expenditure and tax hikes will uh, impact GDP, uh, GDP negatively. 
Now, according to the Capital Market Soundness report, which was released earlier today, prudent public spending and public investment management will be key to ensuring stability in areas such as this. The report also reveals that there is an opportunity for financial technology innovators to explore solutions that will provide efficient models of operation that characterize existing capital markets and infrastructure. Here you talk about things like uh, reg tech, that's probably a, a, a solution that would be able to help the regulator to, or would be able to help a licensee of the regulator to comply with the standards that the regulator has set. It goes, it gets very complex to the extent you, you even have the, what is coming up later, subtech. That's where you, the, the solution will be able to trigger uh, an action going on in the market, like if a market in intermediary has not been able to meet the requirements to trade in terms of uh, whether they have the funds to do so, it will be able to trigger that. But we must concede that that work having been done, it has not had the impact expected. So what effort has been put in, but we have not seen uh, an equivalent uptick in the market. So there's a lot of work going on right now to try and do a bit of analysis as to what's the gap. If the products are being designed, the legal frameworks are being put in place, the education is being supported, then why are we not seeing uptake? There are a number of issues that need to be deliberated, and actually we will be publishing um, some of our own internal in-depth analysis uh, around some of these issues and our key recommendations. Well, moving on, coffee farmers affiliated to the Kikima Cooperative Society in Makweni County are now demanding that their coffee be transported to the Lower Eastern Coffee Mill or Lekom within Machako's town for milling. The farmers urge the society's management to adhere to their demands, therefore cutting costs which they say the society incurs when taking coffee all the way to the Thika and other distant locations. Each bag of coffee is transported for about 250 shillings, while locally taking the same coffee to Lakeham would cost 50 shillings per bag. According to the manager of Lakeham, Zeng, uh, Mr. Zengia, the mill was purchased on farmers' behalf by the Machakos Cooperative Union to bring about the lowering of such costs. Kulima wana kulwa pesa nyingi sile asifai. Wana governor utuetie mkutano tukutani na wewe kikima pamoja na hawa uh, wakilishi wetu uh, wa society hawa ni chairman na wafuasi yake. Kutoka magajana kuna pesa ambao atuja liwa tangu wa leo. Na zitu litanganywa tutapewa pesa. Alafu kuna mpango ingine walipapanya wakajukua title deed za kinini za factory wakapeleka dhika ndivyo tupewe pesa ya kulikwa. While well, staying with coffee now, members of the National Coffee Cooperative Union have dissociated themselves from those calling for the disbandment of the implementation committee or the proposed changes in the coffee subsector. The members who pledged their support behind the implementation committee led by Professor Joseph Kier addressed journalists in Nakuru saying that corruption would always fight back. Take a look. Tupunguzue iyo muzigo, bandera kulipa milioni moja US dollars, tuwe tunalipa elfu ishirini peke yake, ndiyo tuwe tunaparticipate kwa auction. Na tutakuwa tumiondoa Katel Moja. Tunabaki Tanasa na Trenda. Sabu Trakua to Memil, to Mejusia, Satunabaki Nambaya. Kama Sisi Wakurima, Kuziusia Kawa, Ni Ndoto Kenya. Lakini Kwayare and Atakikana, the stack force in a Saidia, Mkurima Kuziusia Kawa and Atakua Atoe, one billion Kenya shillings. US. US, US dollar. US dollar. I was a Kani. 
Well, interesting times there in the coffee sector as reforms continue to take root and the old systems, of course, try to fight back. Now, women have constantly demonstrated their ability in creativity and innovation despite not getting much recognition for their work. Now, this state of affairs has prompted a focus on women's capability in innovation and creativity in the celebration of the World Intellectual Property Day. The occasion is celebrated every year on the 26th of April to create awareness on intellectual property rights. In the 17 years that the world has been celebrating World IP Day, this is the first time they have sought, saw it fit, seen it fit rather, to honor um, the work that women are doing in the areas of creativity and innovation. And why is that important for us? As you've rightly said, it's shining a light on the work that is already happening by a lot of powerful and, and innovative and creative women in the country and in the world, but specifically what impact they're having on our societies, on our GDP, on the economy of our country. Um, just earlier today when we had the speech by uh, the Attorney General delivered by Madam Christine, um, the Deputy Solicitor General, um, she mentioned some statistics that we are actually in the creative industries contributing to more than 5% of our GDP. And that statistic was from 2007. So 11 years have passed. You can only imagine how much it has grown. We're also honored to have Mr. Sigay with us who is going to tell us why this function, that is World Intellectual Property Day, important to the Kenyan market. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Asante sana for having me. Yes, the day is very important for two reasons. The first is um, creating awareness about the issues of women, which is really key to the, because of the theme, powering women in innovation and creative sectors. So we need to know how women contribute, because um, <clears throat> they are, women are like 52% of the population. And um, their role at this moment is a bit, um, it's, it's not very clear. Through events that we are trying to have here, we want to see how the, the awareness of the contribution can be raised and um, actually encourage younger women to create some more as well. Well, the health of the Kenyan financial services sector continues to rise in dynamism where opportunities arise when changes occur in regulation. Now, despite the shifts of uneven growth over the past decade, globalization and digitization are changing the competitive nature of the market, and multinationals are increasingly looking to Kenya as a gateway to expand into the region, even as regulations such as the new International Finance Reporting Standards of or IFRS for banks and insurance firms kick in. So just how does this affect long-term savings and investment? This is just one of the topics that was covered in the Zamara Pensions Report that was released recently. The equity asset class had an average asset allocation of 24%. Fixed income had an average asset allocation of 70%, the majority, essentially, 70%. This was invested in fixed income includes securities such as government bonds. In fact, almost 70% of fixed income is, tends to be government bonds. There's been very many regulatory changes, both in the banking and insurance space, uh, some of which have been a direct response to what we've seen in the market. Uh, the markets have grown, but the markets have also had um, fairly difficult time in terms of some of the industry players uh, suffering. Uh, there have been questions about how much trust can you actually place in some of these financial institutions. Uh, remember, financial instruments and a financial contract is all about trust. It's not, you're not manufacturing uh, products and goods. It's a trust game. Well, innovation around the health sector is one of the surest ways in which counties can improve delivery of services to the counties and ensure universal health coverage, now attaining significant improvements in the quality of life for their citizens. Speaking during a panel discussion on health, Sandra Ojembo, Safaricom Head of Corporate Responsibility, noted that there needs to be continued discussion with various stakeholders on issues around the automation of NHIF information, patient registration and claims management. She was speaking at the county 
well, devolution forum that was held in Kakamega County. Innovation is seen as, um, you know, uh, the top end of the spectrum, blockchain, artificial intelligence, etc. But let's not forget that somewhere in a county, let me say Busia County where I come from, there is a mother whose life will be saved today by virtue of a simple phone call or an SMS. So as we look at innovation, let's look at it from the entire spectrum. High-end innovation to continuing innovation that I think will continue to impact the masses for us. So our solutions really span the entire range. Um, it's very important for us to also provide solutions and platforms for continuous learning. We have a couple of platforms where we're able to train hundreds of thousands of community health workers very efficiently, very effectively through very simple SMS and USSD solutions. Well, so many different events.